Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to this week's Monday Motivation. This motivation was started way, way, way back in 2008 and has come up to, to speed. It started from being an email that was sent around when I was a, a senior manager in financial services. And um, it's come up to speed today as Facebook Live to you every single Monday at 7 a.m. So Monday motivations were really created because Monday was getting a bad rap. It was like the day that was most feared. I don't like Mondays and all of that, those kinds of sayings that you've most likely heard. Yet for so many of us, and do forgive me, my camera is shaking today because I am not at home. I am, <laughs> and I am without a stand. So I'm actually holding my camera out. So forgive the wobbles. So Monday motivations were really designed to motivate your Monday, your morning, even your week, and sometimes the beginning of your month. So um, if you are one of my live watchers who like to watch in the background, that's absolutely perfect. And if you're one of my live watchers that like to um, put comments below and, and chat as we go through, then please feel free to, like Ivona, who says, morning, Jenny, with a little kiss. Morning, Ivona, kiss back. So. Um, Yes, motivation for your morning, your Monday, and even your week. And this week, I am wanted to talk about um, a couple of things, really. And really, it's around words. And this came to me because, actually, because of International Women's Day. I have been celebrating International Women's Day. I've been speaking for it, both online and um, and live in the flesh. In fact, in it, on this weekend, I was in Sheffield in the UK and um, speaking to approximately 100 women um, who were who were there to really get breakthroughs. It's a fabulous event. I was one of many speakers and um, we had a couple of panels. It was great. And it was interesting, the conversations um, that I was having kind of in between these talks as well. So this is really for you if you have ever had thoughts creep into your head or had other people tell you things about yourself that they're, they're like expectations for you and it reminded me of um, when I was at school the, the, um, the song we used to sing sticks and stones may break my bones but you know but words will never hurt me like think about that for a second sticks and stones will break your bones but words would never hurt you think of the words that people have said to you in the past that have made you kind of go oh oh that wasn't too nice i think words can be um can be really destructive if used in the wrong way words from others can feel really destructive if used in the wrong way but here's the biggest critter i see as a coach as a coach especially when i'm having private client conversations what i see is the words that we use for ourselves are often the most damaging so with a good morning to Alan, who's hopped on and said morning. My name's Jenny Kovacs. I'm actually nicknamed the Queen of Being Seen because you standing out, you getting your work out there and you being visible is why I get out of bed every single morning. I leap out of bed every single morning. And um, today I'm just going to cover and talk about um, a couple of ways in which we can um, be kinder to ourselves in the words that we use. Now, quite often, it's not that obvious that we're doing that. I mean, if we were to run a tape at the end of each day, showing my, my years, run a tape, but if we were to run like a recording of everything that we'd um, thought about in terms of our own self-talk throughout a day and listen back to it, we would probably be quite mortified. And if somebody close to us, friend, relative, niece, nephew, you know, aunt, whoever, um, if someone close to us was was to be on the sort of receiving end of some of the words that we use, then we would be pretty mortified too. So one thing that I'm going to ask you to do um, today, if you can, is to please share this on your timeline. You never know who might need to hear these words. You never know who might be going through um, some sort of difficult time. And, you know, there was, I kind of want to pause for a second to say there was um, some like awful irony to last week where um, I, I covered the Monday Motivation and I touched on the fact that, this, and if you haven't seen it, scroll down, it's number 17. Um, when I touched on um, the subject that I was speaking about and also, you know, about change and also how this could be for grief and then found out like an hour later 
that the um, very lovely soul who is Keith Flint from The Prodigy had unfortunately passed. So the reason why I share that last week's story with you is because my own motivation about change was actually helpful to me for something that I didn't even know was about to happen. Um, so I feel really passionate that, you know, for whatever reason he took his own life, um, we didn't know what was going through his head, we didn't know what was going on with him. And quite often we think we know our friends and family really well and we don't know what's going on with them. So these Monday motivations are really nothing to do with being visible, nothing to do with like career promotion or standing out and everything to do with having a person be able to listen, even if it's only to a few minutes of this, and be able to um, have a self-motivation tool um, that they can motivate for themselves and get out of whatever hole that they feel that they're in or trap that they feel that they're in. So with that to say, um, this week's subject, the sticks and stones, and namely the words that can never hurt me from that kind of childhood song, actually, um, the worst words that hurt us are the ones that we use against ourselves. So run that tape of what you've said to yourself all the way through the day. And if you heard somebody else say that to a loved one, you would go completely like ballistic. You would say, how dare you talk to them like that? How dare you say this? How dare you say that? So I'm going to try and swap arms without jiggering around the phone too much. Um, so you wouldn't have it for somebody else. So why do we accept it for ourselves? Well, the first reason why is because we don't actually hear it. Now, think about this, like walking, like breathing, we go into automatic pilot. And actually, a lot of the times we do this with our thoughts too. They go into automatic pilot, so we don't even hear them. So the first action that I would love for you to take when watching this is to um, start to notice the thoughts that go through. Now, don't get me wrong, some of these are gonna be really empowering thoughts. And they're worth capturing too for the days where you feel like, oh, nothing's going right. You know, I can't get through this or I can't do this thing. You can go back to your positive, um, you know, your positive words, the things that you tell yourself. Like it, it was really funny. I was having a conversation with somebody and, um, you know, from my, my background from financial services, I started off as a mortgage underwriter. And I really like get stupidly excited about um, when it comes to like mortgages and financial services. That's to me the sexy sweet spot, which I know sounds weird, but I really loved my time in mortgages um, and especially even when I went to commercial mortgages. And, you know, I remember buying my first house and everyone kept saying, you're not going to be able to buy a house with that budget. And I found a cool house and I made a lot of money from that house. So I'm having this conversation with somebody and I said, I love mortgages, I love property. I always make a lot of money from that. Like, what a nice affirmation that is. I always make a lot of money from property. Keep it, because when you hear yourself say great things like that, you can file it away for those days when you realize some of the things you're saying in your head could be, and these are things that I've heard like over the years, as I say, with clients at networking, I'm so useless at. If you think of it like a silent promise to yourself, if in your head is like, I'm really useless at fill in the gap, every time you, you that comes up in your mind, it's like you're telling yourself, you're reinforcing yourself that you're really useless at the thing that you're doing. And it's, you know, it's no um, coincidence that when I speak to people, this comes up a lot when I talk to people about speaking, about public speaking, public speaking and video, where they'll say, they'll explain to me, why they're so bad at public speaking. And as they try to explain it, they'll fumble on their words. They, they won't be able to get their words out. And it's all that's doing is it's just cementing more of a belief that you don't really need. So like I say, the first thing to do is just notice, start to notice what goes through your head. Don't try and change it, don't try and stop it, don't try and switch it up, but just notice because noticing both the things that you that empower you and the things that disempower you will make a difference. It will really make a difference. So your only job is first off just to notice it. If you've if you're like me and a bit of a stationary freak and you've got a, a notebook go in spare, even if it's in the back of a notebook or a journal, um, just start to write it down. If you're a bit electronic as well, then maybe open up a new note on your phone and start to notice your empowering beliefs and your disempowering beliefs or the things that you say that really empower you 
or the things that you say that actually disempower you. And I'll let you know now, you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised at what comes, what comes out. Um, you know, I do this stuff too. So I don't just preach it and expect people to do it. I do this stuff too. And I'm always finding little nuggets. I'm like, oh my gosh, how long have I been saying that? You know, so I've only said, so need, this, um, need these messages this week. Thank you, Jenny. Um, my pleasure, Ivona, my pleasure. And you know, sometimes we think that we don't need them and then we go through these and we find them. This is what drives me to do these Monday motivations. You know, whether you're watching this live or on the replay, because we all kind of go into our own blind spots. You know, that's the human psyche. Unfortunately, humans could live quite a simple life, but because of our brains and because of how we are, we make things complicated because of our thoughts. So first thing to do is really notice the words that are going out. Um, and then, you know, and, and note them down somewhere. Note them down somewhere so you can come back to them. One of the things that I've noticed over the years is when we make a note of them, it, it's almost like it neutralises it. We bring it out of our head and onto paper and then it almost neutralises the power or the hold it has over us. OK, so um, the next thing that I wanted to say about um, words would never hurt us. Once we've become aware of the words that we're using um, for ourselves, um, then start to notice the words that we use when we're um, sharing with others, you know. Do you have those friends or family members where, you know, you go into a conversation and all of a sudden you're just whinging and moaning and not feeling really great? And I think the clue isn't about right or wrong here. The clue is when you're having a conversation with somebody or doing anything and it just doesn't feel great, there's a reason for that. It's like your body is screaming, this isn't, this isn't good for me right now. So have a look at the conversations you're having. Are you tending to be in complaint mode? You know, it's it's a it's a really easy thing to get into. It's a really easy thing to get into, you know. Oh gosh, the traffic was so bad. Oh my gosh, it was so boring to sit in. And then before you know it, other people are, oh my gosh, I had this one time when. When you think about it, and like if you've ever sat in traffic, just go back to a specific time when you did. And even just to voice it, it kind of gives you like a sinking feeling inside. Why would we want to set up our day and motivate ourselves with those sinking feelings? This is not to say that you stick your head in the sand and like ignore anything that isn't like positive and shiny and, and sparkling at all. This is just to say to notice how it feels in your body when you um, talk about certain things with certain people in certain ways. And this is not about blaming them and saying, oh, they're really bad, you know, um, you know, they're a person that I don't want to be around. This is about really checking in with yourself as to what makes you feel great. It could be that when you talk about being stuck in traffic jams, you feel absolutely on top of the world. And if so, then that's the thing for you. Um, I've only saying, yeah, a lot happens in a week. We definitely need to be aware of what we're saying about ourselves. Yeah, a lot happens even in an hour. The number of emotions that we go through are like immense. So I'd really love to know whether you are watching this live on the replay. Out of those two things that I've shared so far, is there anything um, that you think that could be helpful for you? OK. And the third thing that I wanted to share is um it's interesting and i hear coaches do this the most because we as coaches know better we've done a lot of personal development ourselves we've learned a lot about the human psyche and we often um, work with other people and this is where people edit their language now i see this in two ways if you're not a coach um, or not working in the people development industry um you know sometimes like i'll have conversations with clients and they'll say yeah i I need to do more of this thing because, well, I don't know. And they don't finish the sentence. They don't bring it out of their body, out of their head, out of their mouth. And quite often I'm saying, so what were you going to say just then? You started to say, I don't feel that I, and then you tailed off. What was that about? Now, for coaches and for people that do work in personal development or people that just love personal development um, as, a, as a thing, you know, before I got sort of deeply involved in it as a career I remember I used to buy lots of like self-help books and things like that you know um when I was when I was still working in um financial services because I was um in charge as a, as a learning and development manager and as a commercial mortgage manager of managing the training the learnings for sales teams I would buy books on sales too I would buy books on um you know, conversations like really great communications 
um, I would buy books on goal setting and things like that. And I loved reading them myself and I loved sharing those and kind of having a bit of a library with those people too. Um, and then one of the things that I noticed was that if I thought I was doing something wrong, I would try and stop myself. I hear a lot of coaches do this specifically. Um, you know, you hear a lot about the word but, you know, um, and all the connotations that come with it. And I've had so many conversations with coaches where they say, yeah, I've been really busy this week. And, and they replace it with and. Well, what they're doing is almost like um, sticking sticking a plaster over it and not acknowledging where they really are and where they really feel. And if you're a coach or you're somebody that works in personal development, then it's important for you to be honest with yourself so that your clients will be honest with you. By changing the word but to an and, which we would like to do, you're negating what is really going on for you under the surface. And by not allowing yourself to say the things that you want to say, this will then kind of stifle what's really going on and it kind of pushes it down and the reason that I bring that up is um, it's a really important thing for all of us to feel how we feel in the moment personal development isn't about denying ourselves how we really feel or pretending that everything's great throwing glitter on it and going yeah everything's fantastic it's about really and truly acknowledging where we are so, you know, for those of you that do like to be kept accountable, um, like to work with coaches, whether it's for smaller projects or larger spaces of time, um, this is something that I, I still do. And I still do work um, privately with people and in groups when they come along. So if you're someone you know needs the help of a coach just to be able to get through a few things, get past a few things, um, then do send me a message to this page and um, I'll ask you a couple of questions, send you a schedule to book um, a time that's mutually right for both of us in our diaries and we'll have a conversation to see whether you actually do need any help from me or whether there's something else that you need. That said, um, I would really love to know out of those um, things that I shared today, so um, noticing and then being able to, you know, maybe write it down somewhere and have a look at it, like, and out of the other things that I shared, which which are the things, which one thing do you think is going to make the biggest difference? I, I call it the leverage point. Which one thing is going to make the biggest difference to how you are motivated or demotivated um, throughout your hours of your day, you know, throughout minutes of your day? Which one's going to be the, um, the best for you? And if you don't want to post it here publicly on this page, there is the Vibes Tribe group, which is a group of awesome and really um, warm and friendly people. It's a very soft place to land. So you can go in there and the only people that see your comments are anyone else who's in the group. Friends and family won't see what you post in there. So it's a really safe space. So um, and we've welcomed in a whole set of new people, um, you know, this week. Um, especially after the speaking gigs and the International Women's Day stuff that I've been doing. So really excited to see what you'll share. Really um, hoping that you will share this with other people. And I know sometimes it feels vulnerable and you think, I don't need the help. You know, if you want to share this as a private message with a friend, I would recommend that you do that. Um, just think of maybe people that, you know, could benefit from this. And um, there's an option at the bottom of this to share it with them as a private message. Tell them to drop by and say hi. I'm always like my heart is always warmed by um, the feedback and the encouragement and the, the things that you tell me that um, come from these Monday motivations. So that's it for now. Today is my coaching day. So I'll be mostly coaching and having a couple of calls with people um, too. And I'm putting the finishing touches on... Um, something that I'm really excited about, the Be Seen Academy, um, and that is an online resource, a really affordable um, investment so that you can go through and, and do things like um, know how to plan out your content if you're running workshops or retreats, know how to deal with the different types of delegates if you kind of find yourself unexpectedly um, having to um, deal with somebody who's maybe not on the same page as you. Um, for those of you that are self-employed, there's some great cash flow conversations. And for those of you that are employed and looking at getting pay rises, um, I would highly suggest a, a quick, how can I call with me? How can I session? Because there'll be some slight different nuances that you need to, that you would need to do. But there's lots of stuff going into the BC in school and that's um, all to get you, um, you know, get, get in an academy format to get you, um, so you're standing out, your work's out there and people can find you more easily. You're more visible. So, have a look at some of the comments that you're putting um, 
the bottom. Biggest difference for me, awareness um, and noting in my journal. Absolutely. And think about this. This is why I love what you've written there. Um, I love what you've written there because we spend a lot of time worrying, literally turning it round in our mind, like plowing stuff round in our mind. A more useful way to do worry is to at least, rather than turn it round in our mind, to write it down. We can do a, a lot more with that um, to motivate us, to get rid of the gremlins that we maybe didn't even know we've had until we've noticed them. So um, really looking forward to hearing how you're doing with those this week. And um, I look forward to reading your comments in the Vibes Tribe too. Thank you so, so much for watching. Have a fantastic morning, have a fantastic Monday and have an absolutely magical week. Bye for now.